Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Page of Swords podcast. This is episode 51, and I am bringing on Allie Edmondson. Did I say that right? I don't think I said your last name right. Edmondson. Uh, yeah, Edmondson, yeah. <laughs> okay, perfect. <laughs> and you are a female bodybuilder who's up and coming in the amateur ranks, right? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And where are you located? Uh, what, in the UK? In the UK. Okay. Do you, where do you train at? Um, it's the gym. Uh, it's called Premier Fitness. Okay, great. I, I've heard of King's. Is that anywhere near you, King's Gym? Uh, no, that's in London. I'm, I'm oh, London. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay. That's, a, I'm like trying to think geographically, like where everything's at. Um, and then you're, are you coached by um, Callum? Is that his name? Callum uh, Restrict, yeah. Okay. I think I've heard of him before, like other UK um, bodybuilders use him too. So have you been happy with him? Yeah. Um, one thing that I really like about him is that um, he does actually take care of your health. Yeah. And he, um, he he always goes with the, the least to get the most out of it. Whereas other coaches that I've had, it's always been throw the kitchen sink at you and then see what kind of like how your body responds to it. But when, once you do that, you don't have anything to increase upon from there. So slow and steady wins the race, as they say. So <laughs> Yeah. So And how long have you been working with him? Uh, since uh, March last year. Okay. Okay. Perfect. And when you started with him, just out of curiosity, did you go out, um, did you like go to him and say, this is the show I want to do? Or did you just say like, Hey, like I would like to do a show. And then you guys talked about it. Uh, actually it was kind of, I kind of put that out there cause I do want to compete, but I didn't put um, a time frame on it. Whereas he actually did. So with me, when something's written in store and I've made a complete decision on it, mm -hmm. uh, I follow it through till the end. So because he made like um, the, the date set as of the year of competing, uh, I would just, I was rolling with it. So <laughs> yeah, that's great. I, I'm glad that you straight off the bat can say that you guys had some good communication there, right? Did you feel that, you know, whenever he said, I, I have potential with you to do this show and you felt confident and you just rolled with it? Yeah, I mean, um, well, the shows that I've picked as well, they all like, big shows for someone that's like new to competing um but to me as well i feel like i don't see the point in competing in like um you know little local shows because i feel like it, it's good for the experience but i feel like the prep itself is gonna it's always gonna be intense so i feel like i want to get something actually out of it so i kind of basically i'm just throwing myself in the deep end but that's how you learn and grow so yeah, that's, and that's, yeah. It's great. I love that mindset. And, you know, it's, that's like different for certain people, right? Like sometimes they see a big show and they're just like, I don't know about that, but it sounds like for you, you're like, I'm, I, you probably work better under pressure. And the fact that this is a big show I do when it's self-inflicted. Okay. <laughs> uh, but when it's like, um, uh, when it is, it's with, with everyone, if you're like trying to live up to other people's expectations mm -hmm. and you've got your own self-inflicted pressure, that's when it creates this big monster that is actually self-destructive. So I always like focus on the pressure that I want to put on myself rather than what external factors might, you know, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Do you do any type of like journaling or anything? Like I know some people like the manifest or like, do you do anything like that to kind of help you prioritize or like kind of organize your goals? Um, I don't really, I, I visualize a lot. Like it's more like mental, mental rather than just like writing things down. But I do write things down as well because um, like you kind of just, uh, instead of just thinking about stuff, sometimes it is good to actually visually read it as well. So it kind of makes it feel like it's coming to life in a way. Yeah, right. Yeah, I, I've seen that. Some people just, that, you know, like I know for me, like my next show, like as soon as I knew which show I wanted to do, I wrote it really big on my refrigerator. So because, you know, every day I'm going to get into the refrigerator and see, you know, I'm going to do the show in 2023, you know, and um, so I was just curious if like anything like that resonates with you too, with with uh, picking a show and competing. <laughs> yeah. So I believe like in all the like law of attraction kind of stuff and like, uh, you know, manifesting and stuff, obviously you've got to put the physical work into it. But I do feel like the, the mental side and the physical side goes together. And when you combine it together, that's mm -hmm. when you see like the magic happen. 
Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, and you like what you said. You have to put the work in. How long have you been uh, working out, like in training in the gym? Um, bodybuilding itself uh, since 2015. Okay. Yeah, and I know. And you're how old, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, I'm 26 at the moment. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah, see, and like, you're still young. I mean, female bodybuilding, a, a lot of the, the girls are like, you know, in their like 30s and stuff, they've put their time in and they've worked. And I feel like you're making the right moves to get in and kind of start with a big show and get your face out there. And it doesn't sound like you're you're nervous yet, right? Do you feel like you're good? Um, <laughs> I am, but I'm kind of just, um, I think I'm not thinking about the future. I'm kind of think taking each day at a time because I think, you start thinking about the show and the lead up to it, it's kind of it's kind of creating anxiety because you're thinking about what's happening in the future rather than just focusing on the present because the only control we have is what we do like right now this second. So mm -hmm. I, I've kind of like I am nervous, yeah. but it, I'm I'm kind of excited as well. So the, the excitement's kind of pushing the nervous out of the way a little bit. So do you think that that happens a lot now that people put too much focus sometimes on the future or like because you you are correct I think you should think about the present because bodybuilding is an everyday lifestyle so every day like you should just be focused on that but do you see anybody else that might suffer from creating their own poor anxiety with too much future thinking um yeah I think everyone does it I think it's not just in bodybuilding I think just everybody and just humans in general I think we all have the um the habit of thinking about the future. And I think um, sometimes a lot of it is just what we see on social media as well. And we just, uh, I don't, we kind of go into that panic mode and start thinking about just things that don't really matter in the present moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And with social media, I know that we, we've been talking about this and that um you see people and they only show the good stuff right and that that's all that they want to share and like people are allowed to share what they want but you as the viewer or consumer like you can kind of you know view it but then you have to take it with a grain of salt right yeah that, that's the thing um like obviously everybody's entitled to post what they want and, and the thing is as well we don't want to be reminded of negative things happening on our lap so you're obviously not going to see negative things being posted by people that even if it's something that just naturally occurs in life like people don't want to be reminded of certain things that they see as negative mm -hmm. so they do post more positive things or things that might seem um, a bit superficial at times mm -hmm. but um i think like i kind of just lost what i'm going to say then <laughs> it's okay no because I, I mean i was going to say uh next to that is um you know, like for me in my off season and, and being a little thicker, like I, over the years, I've gotten better mentally being like, this is for a purpose, you know, like all the food I eat. And I've also this off season, I've been really learning that genetically, like my lower half is just going to be thicker. Um, because that's just, that's just my body. And I can't always compare to other girls in their off season and where they carry stuff. And, um, and, and plus being a newer pro myself, it's, we've got a lot of work to do and I'm, I'm going to eat, but I'm not going to get sloppy. And that might look different on me than someone else too. But, um, and, and I'm trying to be a, a good example and post that, but, you know, don't get me wrong. Like we were saying earlier, like, uh, you know, you post a shredded picture and it, it gets so much more attention and that really bothers a lot of people. Um, I think it kind of, um, I think it depends on the individual as well and how they kind of, take if they take social media with a pinch of salt it's easier to deal with i think if they get a bit too um sucked into that sort of attention and like that dopamine type of release when everybody's like lacking and talking about you and just like putting you on a pedestal basically mm -hmm. i think that's when you can get consumed by it and i think that's where you start kind of i think sometimes you can actually lose yourself when you get too much attention where people are putting you on a pedestal yeah, I remember um, trying to think like the the pressure gets to people like I know at the Arnold uh, in Ohio that just happened, I think that sort of happened to Brett Wilkins a little bit, you know, he was like talked about so much about coming into the show and, you know, you know, coming out of classic and this was like his second show, I think, in the open, and there was just so much pressure. 
And I just like can't imagine because yes, it's awesome to get that kind of attention and people are like excited for you. But like, then it's like, well, what if something happens? What if I fail? And you don't want to think about the negative, right? And you don't want to show that on social media. So it, what that yeah. does is it builds up and it's just, it's really tough about the sport. And then it's, um, it is hard to kind of separate, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So it is interesting because when I just think when it comes to getting shredded and people want that attention, um, I, I do see it a lot more now where I feel like I'm just going to say from a girl's perspective, but I see girls that want to like, they don't want to take a long off season because they just want to hurry up and get shredded again so they can get attention. Yeah. Um, but I'm like, no, like just grow. <laughs> do you mm. see this? Yeah. I mean, I've, I've kind of been the opposite because I've been like, not wanting to, well, it's not like I would not wanted to die, but I just wanted to focus on keep growing. Yeah. And I know that in a deficit, you can't really grow muscle. I mean, you can look actually bigger because you're leaner. Mm -hmm. So there is that kind of positive to it. Yeah. But I think I was so focused on getting like just bigger and bigger and bigger that I never like dieted basically. But I thought, um, I think now I've got to the point, I've had like a good few years to build a solid foundation and let the muscle stick as well. Yeah. that I think now is the time to just get my foot in the door now we're competing and then see where that takes me as well. Yeah. And I, you know, what is interesting, like, obviously like that does happen where people just want to keep growing because they never feel like they're going to be good enough or whatever. But um, I mean, I've had friends that get like that and I'm just like, just go for it. Like there's never a good time to really do anything in life. You just have to go. I mean, and if your coach is confident in you, um, that's a, that's a huge reassuring thing for the mind to just be like, listen, my coach believes in me. And like, I think we can do this because all you do is follow a whole plan. Right. Yeah. So, and, and I know how it is. Oh, go ahead. And as long as you follow the plan um, then the rest is out of your control then. Absolutely. And, and I know that in female bodybuilding for you, like you are like, you know, you're the big girls, right? So it's like, you're like, I just want to grow more so that I can hold my own. Right. But let's, let's face it. Like, I, th I think like I I've been following you for a while and I'm like, man, she's got this, you know, but you know, everyone's going to look different when they cut down and you just got to go for it. And I do feel that when you're an amateur, you do want to bring the conditioning and you might lose a little bit of size, but that's okay. Because as an amateur, like you're just trying to build up and you've got so much time to build muscle, right? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, is there anybody that you follow in bodybuilding that really inspires you that like you kind of like, I well, you know what I mean? Just inspire you. Um, I like following uh, Michaela Aycock. Yeah. Um, I, like, I like what she stands for and I like that she's herself. She doesn't follow the crowd mm -hmm. and she does what she needs to do. And I think that's a very good um, message to send out to people. Mm -hmm. I agree. I'm a big fan of her too. And she's super nice because she always does those Q and A's and stuff too. And it's, and it's pretty real. And, and it's, have you ever noticed how basic some of it is too? People will ask her questions and she'll just be like, yeah, you just, you just do it. <laughs> so yeah. You don't have to ever complicate yeah. it. Right. Well, isn't that yeah. Well, there isn't any magic to it. Is it? It's just, <laughs> just do the work. <laughs> yeah. And she is a hardworking person. She, you know, works on a farm and stuff and um, you know, I don't think that she's heavily into social media like she is, but she's not like putting so much time into, you know, wanting attention or anything. And, um, you know, I do wonder what she went through when she had to go through her, her uh, surgery and kind of had to cut back because I, I do know like her focus this off season is a lot of legs and, yeah. um, you know what I mean? So obviously that's, that's her side of the story, but I can only imagine like just sitting on social media and like you're getting ready for the Olympia and it's kind of like, you know, you probably feel like you're missing out on some progress, but you know, you just, you guys. I think it's important. Sorry. Oh no, go ahead. Go ahead. I think it's important to um, realize that everybody's like journey as well as it different like uh, paces as well. And I think once you realize that and you have self-belief and just have trust that things will work out for you, I think, it kind of takes out that kind of, um, you know, the negative way of thinking about stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. hard. I think, um, you know, that's, 
you got to just slack, you know? <laughs> yeah. And you just have to learn to, um, like organize your thoughts or what, like your why I see that all the time. People are like, just remember your why, like why you're doing this for yourself. Right. Because if, if getting up on stage for attention is your only like reasoning for it, like you've got to love training, right? Like we love to train in the gym and, and getting to, uh, getting to the stage is just like, let's present it. Like, yeah, we want to win, but, um, I think training is where the true passion comes from. And I think with social media now, people like get that attention and they get addicted to it. Like you had mentioned earlier about the serotonin levels and stuff like that. But, and I think that people don't even like think about that, you know? Well, I'm sure there's been like studies. I don't know where I saw it from, but I'm sure it was um, where there's like a dopamine, dopamine release mm -hmm. um, when you get like this attention or something. Like there is actually like scientific like evidence of that. Yeah. Um, I was going to say there, there has to be people that are literally addicted to likes and views, especially if you're like trying to create a business and stuff on social media. Cause I can see how, I think the more you get involved with the numbers, like following the algorithm and being like, okay, like I have to post at this time of day. Cause it gets me the most likes. And I think when you're doing that every day, I can only imagine how, you know, as bodybuilders, we like routine and consistency. So then that like becomes a part of your routine and I think that mentally you yeah just go crazy <laughs> I think if you're making like an income from social media mm -hmm. I think it's um something that you kind of just do so mm -hmm. you don't really think about it like that because I think some people that actually earn money off it they post and then they come off I think the the problem with social media is when you're scrolling aimlessly and you just you're wasting time and you're not doing anything productive on it absolutely except for just more negative thoughts into your mind and i mean this is where i, I don't know how you feel about it uh but like social media breaks do you think that people would benefit more from that or obviously this always yeah. depends but what do you think about that i definitely think everyone will i think even if you're benefiting from social media i still think just every every person that's on there i think it's important to have a break from social media completely mm -hmm. and um, just live in the real world mm -hmm. it kind of just grounds you as well and I also think people need to come off social media so they can spend time with people that actually love them in real life not just social media mm -hmm. uh, following kind of thing you know yeah I, I agree because I love talking with people and being around people and I, I feel a lot better like I know that like when I'm I'm the kind of person when I'm out to eat with someone I like to be present in the moment and I do not like touching my phone at all. Like I always laugh. I'm like, people are going to be able to know when I get a boyfriend because I'm never going to be on as much anymore because I'll be like, so, you know, in the present and focused when I'm by myself, you know, sometimes I just scroll endlessly because it's like, there's no one to really talk to. Right. So I think people that already have people around them or live with someone. Yeah. Like, like talk with them or go do something. I mean, there's, there's things to do now. Right. Yeah. And then having a, a hobby really helps too. I think people like, cause bodybuilding is considered a hobby for most people, you know? So it's like, honestly, it, it would probably be beneficial, especially in a, in a contest prep to have some sort of other uh, hobby, whether that be like, you know, the knitting people say or having a, a maybe even another sport to play like if you yeah. like to go outside and play another sport it's still active um but it's just like not bodybuilding because I think I even myself would benefit from that just to have something like uh doing crafts or something that just would take me away from bodybuilding for a little bit hmm. do you have any hobbies that you do like other than training and stuff um <laughs> Um, well, honestly, I can live and breathe bodybuilding. Yeah, just yeah. Everything about it, I can just, I never get bored of it. <laughs> That's good that, like, because, and then it doesn't, like, mess up in your mind. Like, you don't, it doesn't sound like you would get burnout. No, obviously, like, when you, like, kind of go to the point where you're not recovering from training, mm -hmm. I think that's the only time that you start feeling like that, that burnout type of feeling. But, um no the, the the passion for it is just it's all there so yeah yeah is there um is there anybody else that you like look to for like that you really like the content that's really positive or anything like that 
Um, there's a few people that I, I follow on, um, for like educational purposes, like the, I think it's called Paul Carter. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. He posts a lot of like hypertrophy type of content. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I like following people like Ron Coleman, Jay Cutler. Yeah. And people that I feel like I can actually resonate with as well. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, you're like me. I really like to follow a lot of the big guys too because they're so transparent. They, they're just so cool. It's like Jay is so nice and, and willing to give out information about what he did. And I think now that he's out of the sport or like done competing, I should say, not out of the sport, but done competing, that there's a lot of things and lessons that he can like share with the young guys that um, that's what I want to see more of is just following the old school bodybuilders and kind of learning from them. I think it's great that, you know, there's newer guys like Chris Bumstead that give out good information, but like he's in the sport. And I know that there's going to be a lot of times where he doesn't post as much because, you know, he's a current Olympian and that has to take so much focus. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. So I'm trying to think of other topics with the social media. I mean, I think a lot of it mostly comes from Instagram. Is Instagram mostly your main uh, social media account? I don't have any other social media. I just, I think Instagram is enough for me. Yeah. Yeah, me too. I really, I mean, I love YouTube. I got into YouTube and- Yeah, um, what YouTube, yeah. Yeah, YouTube. And I post on there, like, as I do my vlogs and stuff, um, because I really enjoy sharing on there. Um, But I mean, like, honestly, like doing- the vlog and the YouTube actually helps me stay off Instagram so much sometimes too, because, you know, when you're filming, like I use my phone. So if I'm using my phone to film, then I'm not like scrolling or doing anything on Instagram. So I have to get you to start a YouTube channel. (laughs) I know I've I've been completing, like I've been indecisive. I think, yeah, but then like, what will I post? And I don't want to just post training videos because I think it, it does get a little bit, repetitive yeah because like there's only so many training videos that you see unless they're educational that's different but if you're just posting it for like entertainment purposes mm-hmm. I, I, it depends who it is because yeah. people like um people like to see like jay cutler training people like to see michaela aircock training mm-hmm. and you know all other female bodybuilders andrea Shaw and everyone um but I think there's a certain point where you keep posting training videos that there's nothing new to see. It's just, you just, I don't know. I don't, I don't think, um, I wanted to post something that's going to be either educational or something that's going to help people, um, like from a mental perspective. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, no, I, I've, I've actually like talked to Michaela about that a few times. I'm like, I love your training videos. She's like, that's what everybody says, but it's the same thing every week. And I'm like, I don't care. Post it. <laughs> yeah, there's like there's certain people that you just like watching training videos and you just never get bored of seeing them post. Yeah, right. Especially like because I've noticed like with her, I really like to see her tempo. Like the mm-hmm. her leg days are very like controlled and it's not and she's not just going through the motions. And like those are like the little things like after every week you start to like go huh like that is a little different than what I see other people do and then she might not realize it because she does it every week but then the viewers were like that's different like someone I know other people that don't do that you know and that's I mean like what you said like it it, a lot of us like to watch people that we want to see like uh Nick Walker's fun to watch yeah I was just about to mention him (laughs) yeah yeah Nick Nick's fun to watch and a lot of his stuff is the same like bunch of cable curls and dumbbell curls and like I don't know like to me I like to see the intensity too I I do like to see like what exercises is like are these people really pushing the limit on themselves Mm. because I think that to me that's more motivational than listening to like the motivational speakers that are just like (laughs) do anything and I'm like okay like yeah I can do anything but I want to see people do anything (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah <laughs> so I mean and what do you think about posing like do you think that I mean I see that you you post like some posing videos I think that that's really awesome to do that um because I, I mean I just don't see a lot of female bodybuilders post much um because they probably think like you do too or it's like oh it's the same thing yeah um 
Uh, what was that a question? I was just asking what you think about like posing and posting posing videos. Do you think like that that's that's helpful? Uh, if it's educational and they're um, like posting how to do like a front relax, for example, and what points to like correct and you know things like that, then yeah, um, I think that's good because it's educational. What's your favorite pose? <laughs> uh, what well, a math is equal just the one that I enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that. Um, I don't know. I mean, I like all poses, to be honest. Hey, that's great. Do you like the part of like doing a full routine with music? Like, is that something that you think is going to be enjoyable? Because I know that you haven't done it on a stage yet, but do you think that that's going to be something that you enjoy? Uh, once I'm actually doing it and I've actually experienced it, I think I'll really enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I think that that's like the coolest thing. Like when I watch the girls and they do their full routines and stuff, it's it's just so artistic. It's very creative to me. And I think that that would be a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. So perfect. Um, and then, so again, going back to like social media and separating it, um, because we all know that it's got, it's got good and bad things and everything of that nature. But do you ever feel that um, with the breaks and stuff, do you just feel like mentally um people should like reevaluate type of things like how would you say if somebody was like struggling with social media like what do you think that they could start to do to uh get better with it you know what i mean like do you know of any tips uh it, it's struggling is in terms of um like comparing i guess i think a lot of competitors compare right yeah i, I think because our sport is like based on comparing yourself on stage to other competitors mm -hmm. it's um probably something that people kind of do off the stage you know? mm -hmm. so um yeah i forgot the question <laughs> oh well here's the thing i want to bring up so when you get up on stage and um you're like you're getting judged by judges right and you should listen to their feedback and then listen to your coach and I think that if people get consumed with social media and they get they start comparing too much, I feel like just go back, just mentally tell yourself, you know, I have a coach and I have judges feedback and I'm just going to listen to that. Like people can be all about like this and that. And you're like, should I be doing that too? No, like, cause that's again, like we're thinking too far ahead and it'll just like build up anxiety and stuff. So, I mean, I know girls that are, you know, they're like, should I be in a different division? And I'm like, well, listen to uh, the judges. Like, what are the judges telling you? Not the peanut gallery on Instagram, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think the only people you need to listen to uh, back on your physique is obviously the, um, the judges. And then you discuss that with your coach and, you know, just believe in yourself and get to work. Yeah. And let's let's like not forget that it all depends on who else shows up to the stage that day. And, you know, if, if people are on Instagram and they're editing their photos with Photoshop or whatever, like that's not going to that's not going to be brought to the stage. So, you know, it, it's sad if if people are editing their photos or whatever, especially like the top tier athletes, like what kind of example is that to set that, you know, you're an Olympian or whatever and editing your photos and then the people watching they're just like they think that you have this like unnatural not real physique right mm. um I, I, don't, I don't know i'll do the editor <laughs> i didn't know mm -hmm. oh, that's okay yeah no i just i'm saying from experience too that it's you see what you want and if if there's something that you are seeing on your social media that's really bothering you you can always mute it like on instagram you're able to kind of like mute people so that you can still follow them but it's just not going to pop up right away when they post something so you know i've done that before like me personally like i get really tired of people posting food porn or like people that are like all about um like cookies and stuff and i've gotten to the point where i've muted people because i'm just like i don't want to see like cookies and stuff like it, it kind of bothers me mentally i'm like i just don't want to see the cookies so 
putting things on mute like that or people that are negative that are just always complaining, I just like mute it. And I, I know that that mentally helps, especially for anybody that's having a hard time taking a break from social media. Just kind of I limit what you see. All of them all together. <laughs> Yeah. And you can do that too. I just know that some people are like, I feel bad if I like unfollow them. And I'm like, well, this is about you. And if, if they notice that you unfollow them um, and you guys aren't really like close friends, like that's kind of weird, right? <laughs> mm, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, goodness. Is there anything else about social media you want to bring up? I'm trying to think, I think we've kind of covered a lot of the stuff. I don't know if there was anything in particular that you wanted to bring up. Um, well, it's basically like all the same kind of thing together, really. It's just like not comparing yourself to other people because people's starting point and journey, it's all going to look different from one another because everybody has different genetic makeup, different starting point, different circumstances, different situations. And I think that's where the issue is when you compare yourself to other people because you're not them and they're not you. So... All you're doing not all you're doing for yourself there is just creating like unhappiness and unnecessary pressure and uh, almost like self-sabotage because you're busy focusing on what someone else is doing and focusing on the goods of them while you're putting yourself down so i think you know appreciate someone's physique for what it is and you know compliment them and you know if you admire them great but don't put yourself down because somebody else might look better than you because that's not the right way to treat yourself either. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad that you said that, that you uh, just don't put yourself down. Just don't. Like, it's it can be hard for some people because low confidence is something I see a lot of the times. Um, but, you know, don't think that everybody's judging you um, and you post what you want. And if it's better for you mentally not to post and don't worry about it, like nobody's forcing you to post on social media either. Like, don't think that it's just like what everybody does and you have to do it too. Right. So do what makes you happy. And with social media too, like, you know, for an amateur, it's great to look at the pros, but don't think that the pros still had to be where you were to get where they are. So don't, don't forget about that journey that that person might've had that you're just not seeing right now. I mean, if you ever speak to these pros as well, and the people that you actually admire, you realize that they, they, they say the same things and go through the same thing as we all do, because we're all just human anyway. So I think that's also like something to take into consideration. Um, instead of just thinking like, like you know, because we're, we're all human and we all go through the same emotions at times. So, Yeah. <laughs> No, you're definitely right. Yeah, everybody's journey is going to be different, but we can all learn and appreciate other people's journeys. But at the end of the day, like you should be excited to have your own journey and that it's not the same as someone else. Like you should be happy that your physique doesn't look like everybody else. Like you're unique in your own way, but you know, at a competition, we all want to win. But uh, again, like you have to really love what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely... I've learned a lot from bodybuilding and, you know, nowadays with social media and like we talked about earlier, we just need people. They like, don't forget the outside world, right? Like video games are fun. Sitting and watching movies are fun. Uh, but you like create really good memories and friendships with people like doing things outside of this world and with bodybuilding. Like that's why you go to a competition and one of the best parts is all the friends and people that you meet backstage. Like, that's like the best part. Like sometimes I meet people from Instagram there, you know what I mean? But like, I've been following you forever and then I get to meet you. And that's like a positive about social media, but I know that's like the best thing ever in the world is getting to meet people that you've been talking to online for a while. Yeah, I think um, when you see people on Instagram and you see them in real life, it's like a strange feeling. It's like, I've seen you on Instagram and then you see them in real life and you, you just realize that we're all just human and then, I think sometimes you forget that, you know, you see these people online so much that you forget, like, that everyone's just human. <laughs> like, yeah, you do. Do you think that, especially bodybuilding, we look at all these pros and stuff as celebrities, and then you see them in person, and sometimes they're actually, like, smaller than you, you thought they would be, or uh, maybe they're just, like, friendlier. I know with me, with bodybuilding, they always end up shorter than I thought. Yeah. I. <laughs> I'm usually like I just imagine everybody being so big and tall and then you meet them like 
oh, you're really short. <laughs> <laughs> and you just don't know on social media because you just like see them. And then in person, it's different. And then it's awesome when they're, they, they are like their social media or they're friendly or they like to talk. And um, cause I know some of the, you know, big bodybuilder, bodybuilders and stuff, like you get kind of intimidated, but honestly, they are so nice. Like, they're so grateful that you're just like, oh, you know who I am. Like, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think that that's a lot of fun too. So and that's the thing. I'm ready to start traveling to other countries and start going to the UK and maybe visit you and um, all nice. the international <laughs> shows. Yeah. Now that I'm a pro, I'm like, now I have a really good reason to go over and do some international shows. <laughs> yeah. Is that your uh, end goal eventually? Would you like to turn pro? And uh, Yeah, of course. I think um, everyone that gets into competing that's truly passionate about it, they all want to turn pro and you want to make it to the Olympia, don't you? Because mm -hmm. that's the biggest show in the world for bodybuilding. Would you like do a show over in the US once you're pro? Do you think you have some? Um, I mean, yeah. I, um, I don't know how it works. Like when you turn pro and like, you do your pro um, debut, I don't know. Mm -hmm. if you have to go abroad or something <laughs> no I think when you turn pro like let's say you turn pro in female bodybuilding um I'm not really sure like what shows that you have that are pro card I would assume like the Arnold's can be like a pro card winner but I'm not sure um but if you turn pro uh then you can do any pro show any pro show that has female bodybuilding as a division I should say so like, cause I know the, uh, I think the Indie Pro is this weekend or next weekend. And that I think is the first female bodybuilding show of the season. So mm. that's like one that's potential. I mean, cause there's only, I mean, you can go to the IFBB website and it tells you all the shows that have female bodybuilding and everything. So yeah, I would love to see you come over here eventually. That'd be great. <laughs> Some of the shows are kind of small. I would, I hope that there's more female bodybuilders in the future. I think it's still like getting back since Miss Olympia's back. But um, yeah, I get really excited when I see the female bodybuilding roster, but it never, it, it's, there's just not a lot of competitors yet, I feel like. Yeah, I mean, I think that's, I think in the UK, I think it's very quiet. <laughs> there's, there's not many at all. No, I was gonna say, I mean, um, Teresa Vance lives close to me. So that's our local female bodybuilder, but um, yeah, I'm trying to think. Uh, otherwise, not really too many here in Pen in my state of Pennsylvania in the United States. But yeah, I would assume in the UK, it's not. Um, do you feel like is your gym kind of like small with the bodybuilding community? Um, it depends what you think oh. is popular and what's like small. I say in general, my town is quite small when it comes to like um, bodybuilding, but there are like a few. Yeah. Okay. But the, the, the guys, they're not women. Okay, I was going to say, are, is there a lot of female competitors? Probably. Uh, not that I'm aware of. They probably okay. do, but I don't, I'm not aware of them. That's not, well, that's really cool that you're, you're so in the training and then you're surrounded in a gym full of like men. Because it sounds like you're not intimidated. You're just like, I'm here to train and get big. And the guys are just like, cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm, I, I'm not bothered at all. I just, I just do my thing and. I'm there to work, so I'm not there to look around and see who's watching me or check myself in the mirror. I'm just, I'm there to just get the job done and then enjoy it, go home, eat and get on with the day. It's that simple, right? Some, but I do know that some females um, that want to get into like lifting and stuff, they get intimidated and it's just like that equipment is as much as yours to use as anybody. And like mm. you said, you don't look at what other people are doing. so. People, I think people get too consumed with what other people are doing when they just need to. And the way I see it is like people should be focused on their own training. They should be that busy focused on theirs that they're too busy to be focused on you. Yeah. So I just, th I just think like if, they, if they're busy watching me and staring at me, that's their problem, not mine. I'm just doing my thing yeah. and getting on with it. Um, if you want to come and say hi, say hello, or <laughs> not yeah. when I'm actually training. <laughs> yeah, and I, I'm glad that you said that because it's like, no, this is for me. And other people can do what they want, but I don't worry about it. Cause I was going to ask you, like, I'm sure you're not on your phone much in the gym. I see people in between every set, they get on their phone. And I just like, I get, if you're changing a song or something, but I actually started putting my phone on like my sets and stuff. So 
yeah. when I'm like on my phone during training, it's because I'm writing like okay. the weight and just tracking my training. Because I personally find that easier because it's digital rather than getting a piece of paper and just like I find, I find like it's wasting paper. Okay. So yeah. I feel like because when you're on it, when it's like digital, you can just like delete it and then yeah. there's no wastage then because I'm just a bit like that. Your paper. <laughs> like the that's great. Yeah. No, that's great. That's what the phones can be used for is just digital, uh, you know, log books and stuff. And I think logging is great. I think everybody should log their weights and stuff, especially when you're trying to progress. And um, yeah, that's, <laughs> I just know that as much as I would love for people to do that more often, I know they're texting or on their Instagram at the gym. And I'm just no, like, no, you can't focus when you do that. I don't know how people can post like even when they post in the meals and then post it onto Instagram thinking like when I'm posting I just want to eat I just want to get on with it because <laughs> yeah. like you'd be surprised how distracting social media is and if you keep thinking about let me take a picture of this let me take a picture of that <laughs> by the time you've actually like 24 hours have gone in your day mm -hmm. you've realized that you spent a lot of those hours on your phone and you're not even like soaked in <laughs> what you're actually physically doing in real life and mm -hmm. I, I think there's like I, I just I don't know how people can physically concentrate on doing one thing and being in the zone whilst they're doing something on the phone as well it's just I don't know how they could they can do that <laughs> but oh yeah absolutely like because I, I take pictures because that's what everybody wants to see people love food photos they love it I'm just like because you know same with with workout training I'm like it is the same chicken and rice that I eat every day but they they love it I don't know what it is but you're right because bodybuilding is really simple you sleep and you eat and you train and it's not really anything fancy but people are like so what do you do and I'm like the, the basics <laughs> and then on your phone like uh, most phones will tell you like I know my phone will be like hey you were on your phone 17 percent more this week than last week and I'm like great thanks for like remember like telling me you are on your phone too much. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if your phone does that, but yeah, I, I think people don't realize the full time span that they're on their phone, right? Mm. It's so much done. Yeah, so if shocked, if yeah. like, if your phone tracked it, you'd be shocked how many people do actually spend the majority of the day on the phone. Oh, uh, yes. Oh, absolutely. Definitely. That That's definitely going to happen. People are on it so much oh goodness and i just want to point out too because um we didn't say this in the introduction but like you've come so far you used to be someone who was like a lot smaller and i i know on your instagram it says that you know you went from anorexic to bodybuilding and you know that that's awesome like is that something that really helps with you like with food and stuff because you're like this food is just so that i can build a better physique now like your relationship yeah. I, I never have, I don't have a bad relationship with food, surprisingly, Good. even though um, of my anorexic type of past, um, I, don't, I don't have a problem with eating at all. If anything, I kind of went the opposite at the start of my bodybuilding where I didn't want to undereat, mm -hmm. but obviously not overeat to get fat, but I didn't want to undereat to lose any muscle. So I was kind of put off dieting uh, at the beginning because I just didn't want to lose any size, but mm. I think that was kind of deranged thinking, thinking like that. I think you just got to uh, eat right, train right, and, you know, whether you're in a, a deficit or a surplus, as long as you're training and resting and you are eating accordingly to your goals, then there isn't an issue. Yeah, I I agree, because I'm, I'm the same way. Like, I don't think I would ever under eat. Like, my coach gives me a plan, and I will eat what it says, but you will not catch me dead eating less than that. <laughs> I know some people are just like, eh, I don't care if it's 50 grams of rice when it's supposed to be a hundred. I'd be like, no, I want that full a hundred. <laughs> yeah. Just lose everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, well, is there anything else you want to go over? I think that that was a pretty good conversation. Social media was most of it, but. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it really. Yeah, I think no matter what, if, if anybody has a serious problem, get professional help. Let's not forget that there's therapists out there and people that 
Um, I think nowadays you can find someone that actually specializes in helping people with technology obsessions and stuff or addictions. So I just want to point that out. Don't be afraid to ask for professional help either, because we're just pointing out things here and having a conversation. But I think that if it's really like actually hurting your life and, you know, your relationships with people, um, don't be afraid to reach out for actual help. And that's just for the listeners. <laughs> All righty, girl. Well, if anybody wants to find you on social media, on Instagram, it's underscore Natalie Edmondson underscore. So, and I will have that all in the description and everything below. So I want to thank you for coming on. And maybe after you compete, we'll talk about your shows and stuff later on. <laughs> yeah, we definitely will. <laughs> all right. Perfect. Well, thank you so much. I had so much fun. Okay. Thank you for having me. Yes, of course. I'll talk to you later. Okay. Bye.